Hello everyone, Pulse here and welcome to another episode of Pulse Impressions. Today we're taking a look at another indie Steam Greenlight title. Uh, this one by the name of Leviathan, The Last Day of the Decade. Now, this is a fairly interesting game, mostly because it's not really a game at all. It's, it's mostly just a kind of um, choice-based, almost those uh, like pick your path storybooks that uh, were, were popular long long time ago this is kind of like a digital version of those pick your path kind of story games um, so I'll, I'll just jump into the new game and I'll show you what it's about um, but before we go in uh, if there are children watching this which I don't think you should probably be watching my channel anyway because I, I tend to have uh, language problems I'll say uh, but this game is very mature um, and it's it's pretty dark um, but it, it's interesting and, and fairly intriguing so let's get into the game shall we uh, currently this is uh, only their their first episode um, and they they said it's going to be an episodic release where they're gonna just release the next kind of chapter as it gets done. Uh, the first episode is available for like a free trial or, or give it a go kind of thing, kind of demo their game, um, and, and it's it's good. It's good. I'll I'll just come out and say it's it's pretty good right from their get go. Um, it's not much of a game, so if you're looking for gameplay, uh, I can just come out and tell you right now you're probably not going to find it here because it's. It's just not that at all. Um, it, it's kind of this mix of point-and-click adventure and, and just uh, like sit around and watch the story unfold and then you make some choices here or there. But uh, I'll just go through the story here. I'll just have to read it. Sadly, there's no voiceover. Uh, Kreese has assigned a lot of homework today. That old geezer is completely insane with his mathematics. At least there wasn't a test today. Damn it! I forgot my textbook at school. Um, oh, whatever. I'm not going back to get it. What idiot would walk all the way back to Kreustam just to get his textbook anyway? If Ruth were here with her carriage, it would be a lot easier. By the way, I wonder why she didn't go to school today. Probably because of the decade. Or maybe not. We're, pu we're purebloods. The plague doesn't affect us. Man, this head is really heavy. Why did I even agree to do this ritual? I just hope mother doesn't see. How would I explain someone's severed head getting into my bag? Hey, shithead! Oh no, him again. Look who it is, it's Oliver Vertron. Your little friend ran away from us today. What a scaredy cat. Haha. -ha. Is it true that he's queer? Kale is straight, leave him alone. Really? Everyone knows he's queer. Everyone except you, it seems. Do you know? Uh, do you, you know, kiss him and hold his hand? Okay, Lars, that's enough. Vertron isn't like that, right, Vertron? Oliver, why do you stick up for him anyway? Because of people like him, there's curses, misfortunes, and grief. Everyone knows that. The, de the decade started because of your good-for-nothing friend. Exactly, it's all Kale's fault. You know, Oliver, I hate your friend, but I hate you even more. I could just punch you right in the face. Hey, Groth, look. Look at his boots. They're all about to fall apart. Yeah, Vertron, did you have to walk here again? Beggar. Boo. He should marry Polly, the idiot from the pastry shop. Turning to the girl. Myrtle, you'd step aside to so Vertron could marry ugly Polly, right? Yeah, Polly is just your style. Vertron, what's the matter? You need to get dressed for the wedding. Put on your bow tie. Hey, where is your bow tie anyway? Your bow tie, Vertron. Did you eat it? Now, I have to stop and talk for a minute, because that was kind of a lot to digest very quickly. Um, as you can see, this game is, is very text-based, adventure-y. Uh, it's very adult-themed. Uh, their, their language choice, and, and the fact that these are kids talking about this stuff, just very bluntly. Um, it's kind of jarring, if, if you're not expecting it. Um, I do think that the the lack of voiceover actually helps the the storybook feel of the game. What the hell was that? I think my cat just like lost her shit all over the <laughs> near the foyer. But uh, what was I talking about? Oh yes, the um, just the the storybook aesthetic going on the game. As you can see with the the like graphic style, the artwork is very do well done. It's very beautiful. 
Um, and it, it really does well to convey the sense of like you're in the storybook. But uh, let me see here. He asked me, where is my bow tie? Um, let me see. What should I do? Uh, I'm going to act. I'm not taking this guy's shit very lightly. Father always said, life kicks those who stand still. For some reason, I don't want life, life to kick me. Especially, it kicks me as hard as Groff and his friends do. I have to act now. Now, what should I do? Hmm. I think I'm going to fight. I'm just going to punch this little shithead right in the face. I know he deserves it. Look at his little face there. He he just he needs a good rockin'. Oliver closes his eyes and hits Groth in the face. The music tempo changes. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the musical choice, but it I suppose it fits the the like change of, of the uh, overall mood, as you'll see here in just a second. You son of a bitch! You'd better pray that I don't rip you limb from limb, you little piece of shit. Mother! Well, bam! I just get knocked right in the face. Blood splatters everywhere. Ha, ah, Vertron. Look, guys, he peed his pants. Go ahead and cry to your mother, dork. Yeah, call for her. We'll beat her, too. We'll beat her and make love to her. Did you hear that, coward? And then we'll tell the whole school everyone will find out your mommy is a whore. Don't touch me. Whoa, oh, God, it hurts. It hurts so bad. What did you say? Take this. And this. Oh, God. I'm bleeding profusely now. Um, there's blood everywhere. Oh god, I'm, I'm fall over on my back looking at the sky. Do you like it, huh? And then they scurry off as bullies usually do after they beat the living tar out of you. Oh god, oh. Why am I so unlucky? Ever since this morning, first I failed reading, and I had to walk home. Mother fired the coachman. Now what's the point? We don't have any money anyway. And father has gone missing. He's never been away for so long. Oliver. Oh, here comes that fellow Ruth, or that little girl, I presume. Ruth. Oliver, is that you? Who else would it be? Your face is all swollen. It's difficult to recognize you. Let me guess. Groth, Holyfield, and his friends, right? They make fun of a lot of people, but only beat you up for some reason. It's because I stand up for Kale, and those assholes take it all on me. No, it's because you're a wimp, and you should fight back for once. Uh, does it hurt? Let me see. Oh, it stings! Stop whining. Here, I brought you some healing potion. Take it, you rascal. It's no big deal, just a couple bruises. Boys always fight. You should be really used to it already. Oh, I feel so much better already. Come on, get up. And dust yourself off. You're terribly dirty. Why the hell do you care? Me, I don't care. But your mother won't pat you on the back for ruining your uh, your clothes. Okay, and then this this is where the game kind of shows what you do in the game. Um, you have this little spyglass thing up here in the top right. As you see, you click it, and it kind of reveals what you're allowed to click in this point-and-click adventure. You've got this, which is kind of like your inventory kind of page here. And then you've got this little bit in the bottom left, which opens up the save and exit menu and where did it go I thought oh yeah if you click here this is like your futuristic cell phone this game is kind of weird it sits in this kind of in-between land where it's kind of like very painterly and, and fantasy-esque and, and old-school and, and clothing and architecture and and aesthetic but um, it's kind of got all these futuristic tools um, I kind of like it actually, um, and I hope hopefully there's like some uh, some uh, looking back in in the story, like maybe some flashback showing how this world came to be, or at least alluding to how it came to be. This like mix of future and old school. Um, let me talk to Ruth here. She did help me out after all. Did you want to ask something, Vertron? Ask it quickly. I have to run home. Um, let me see. I'm gonna ask her. Did she skip school? Why did you skip school today? Uh, I just didn't want to go. What's wrong with that? Um, I'm a Lautner, after all. I'm allowed to do more than just skip school, you know. That's not like you. It's better to skip school than fail reading. How the hell did she know that I failed reading? That's not very nice. What? How did you know? Myrtle told me. So it was Myrtle. She is friends with Groth and that fat moron. 
Yeah, I know. She's the one who called and told me you were laying here. She asked me to help you. I'm already eight years old, and I still don't understand what goes on inside these girls' heads. You still didn't tell me why you skipped school. It's none of your business. I skipped. That's all. Do you have to ask about school anyway? Let's talk about something else. Um, let's ask about the hat, I suppose. Why are you wearing that stupid hat? Stupid? It costs thousands, you know. Everyone knows about the Lautner's fortune, but Ruth talks to talks likes to talk about it every chance she gets. Her family got even richer after Ruth's uncle got into the upper chamber of the council. A hat is a hat. Why'd you ask anyway? It's just you don't like wearing hats. Well, now I do. Hmm. There's something funny about that hat. Um, uh, just tell me, won't you? Just tell me the truth. You didn't just decide to wear a hat. Well, yeah, you're right. Why do you care, Oliver? It's a secret, isn't it? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me! Oh, okay. Uh, but you have to promise not to tell. What? Of course not. I know you too, too well, Vertron. Hesitating a bit, Ruth takes off her hat and... Jesus Lord, she's got a condom on her head. Oh wait, no, she's just bald. Sadly, uh, just look at it. Um, I'm gonna... I don't know if that's the nice option. I'll go with the bottom one here. It's because we live in the same building as commoners. They're disgusting. Gross, I hate them. I told Father long ago that we should hire some poor, pure bloods to mop our floors and cook for us. But Daddy doesn't listen. Damn those lice on my bedroom pillow. How did they get there anyway? And that's... that's why? Of course. How can I go to school without hair? Sarah and Kim will die laughing. Grumbling. They're bird brains. Don't tell anyone. No one, you hear. Ruth puts on her hat. You can't even notice, right? Look. Tell me if you can see something wrong. Okay. Uh, well, I have to go, Ruth. Thanks for your help, I suppose. I want to keep chatting with you, but Mother is waiting. I'm going home. Thanks for helping me. Are you going to go home looking like that? The potion will help. All your scrapes and scratches will disappear soon. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Really? Yeah, you're such a baby. If I say it will help, that means it will help. Drink it when you get home, and don't forget to wash your hands. Oh. I'm going to, Oliver. We have guests today. Father said not to be late. Bye. Ruth runs away. Okay, let's go to the house, I suppose. If it will go. It's, um, every now and then you'll run into, like, a weird issue where it doesn't want to, to go. Mother, I'm home. Mother! Uh, nobody's around. Mother well, must have run some errands or something. What in the hell is that strange smell? Oh, wormwood. Yeah, it's definitely wormwood. I heard that when the decade starts, you need to burn lamps with wormwood. Now, I suppose I'll talk a minute about what this decade thing is. Um, I'm not sure if they've deliberately, like, done a play on words or something with the the way that they're using decade, as in, they're they're deliberately using it as you would expect, as in time. Or if they're trying to allude to something else, like using the two terms together. Because it seems to be that the decade is alluding to, like, a, a disease spreading almost. Like, when the decade hits, it's it brings a plague. Or maybe the decade is the plague itself. Um, it's hard to say at this time. But it's fairly interesting, actually. Oliver starts to go up to the second floor, but suddenly stops. What if Mother is upstairs right now? What would I tell her if she saw me like this? Ruth gave me this healing potion. I need to drink it. Oh yes, I forgot about that. So let's let's grab the potion. Yeah, cold, heavy bottle marks with glowing green cross on it. Inspect the damn thing. And let's look here. Pulling out the cork, Oliver puts the bottle up to his nose and sniff snow. Yeah, puts the bottle up to his nose and sniffs it carefully. It smells good. It's uh like it's made of cedar and herbs. Oliver closes his eyes and quickly takes a sip of the potion. I can feel my body getting healthy and strong. Ah, gross as hell. Mm, God, that was awful. It's a pungent taste, and I, I feel so much better, but ugh, God, it's awful. Now I really want to see, sleep. I feel so tired, my eyes are closing by themselves. I'll go into my room and take a nap for a couple hours. Oh, no, stupid thing. Get off of there. No. No. No, I'm done. Okay. All right, let's go upstairs for real this time. Now, this whole time, I, I hope everyone's been following, I've been carrying this sack that is filled with a severed human head in it. And it's just 
creepy and weird and duh, it's just all kinds of odd and, and and this game doesn't care it just throws the oddities at you very quickly right from the beginning and all through this stuff of getting beat up by a bully and and all of this uh, this story going on I've been carrying this head and now I'm, I'm sick and going home and uh, let's let's head into the room I suppose I'm tired damn you groth how dare you call my mom a whore and beat me up it's wrong of you what is that sound what in the hell is going on I'm waking up waking up and what, oh, my goodness my room is filled with toys and things cuz cuz I'm a child and that's it's a very weird thing you have to come to realize as well oh someone's calling me what are you doing Hello, Oliver Vertron says. Kale, hey buddy, how are you? Great, yeah, not bad. You woke me up, you asshole. No, you are. Listen, don't sleep through the decade. H how was the ritual? Did it work? Huh? I don't remember a damn thing, Kale. I went to bed right after school. W what's this ritual? Uh, the ritual to summon a demon, sleepyhead. A ritual to summon a demon? Oh my god! What, what did you forget everything? On Tuesday, we stole Professor Kortnick's magic scroll. The scroll to summon a Vargoyle demon. We read it, and it had said that you need a uh, need notes of the dead, magic powder, and the head of a corpse. I have the head, obviously. Brig was able to get the notes of the dead and a jar of the powder. His father is an alchemist, and I cut off the head of a beggar. You cut off the head? Oh, Kale, you, you should have used a kitten's head. That's morbid as well. Goodness. Wait, wait, you don't understand. I found the beggar's corpse. The decade killed her. I cut off her head. See, this is where it starts alluding to, like, the... the, Like, maybe it's a, a plague of some sort or something. It, it wasn't me, you hear. I didn't kill her. Okay, I believe you. Go on. Well, the head, powder, notes, and scroll we gave to you. You said that you would do the ritual to summon the Vargoyle. I would perform the ritual... Uh, the, I would perform the rite to summon a demon. That's so cool. Greg wanted to summon the Vargoyle too, but he has two left hands. Everyone knows that. And I, well, I'd never dare to do it. You know that, buddy. You can summon it in your room. You even said that your mom never goes into your room, and your father, well, he's gone, right? You said that. Don't talk about him, Kale. What about the head and the scroll? You said you would hide the head, jar of powder, and notes of the dead in your old toy chest. And the scroll with the spell you stuck in a little book when I was there. Uh, what in the world was it called? Uh, anyway, find the head, scroll, jar with the magic powder, notes of the dead, and summon that gar- uh, Summon the Vargoyle. Think you can do it? I think so. Well then, good luck, buddy. Me and Greg will cross our fingers if something goes wrong. Call me. Okay, I have to s stop for a minute and just point out that during this whole time, we're talking about doing something incredibly morbid and just very very dark we're summoning a demon by using the head of someone that was just alive not so long ago and we've stolen a bunch of stuff and we're eight-year-old kids who have come to possess these things and this whole time that we're talking about this stuff as you can hear the music is very cheery and upbeat and it's very uh, just completely opposite in fact it's, it's complete opposite to how it should feel and yet as an eight-year-old kid, I'm just completely okay with go what's what's going on and what's 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 planned. That I have this head in a in a sack and oh, it's just it's gruesomely dark and it's being it, like just sh overshadowed by this upbeat and I'm happy music. It's it's kind of gross and weird to think about. Let's just see here. I have to find the jar of powder, notes of the dead, and severed head of the old beggar. Yes, the scroll with the spell, I remember that. I hid it in one of the books. Uh, let me see. No, I don't think it would be that one, just because it's... No, those are old books about gods and heroes that my father gave me. Textbooks that are left off the bookshelf. Textbooks are left off the bookshelf. Oh, I see. Okay. And I'm looking for it in a textbook. Um, hmm. Um, let's go here, I suppose. The scrolls around here, I need to look more carefully. Oh, there we go. That wasn't so hard. Take that scroll. Let's go out here. Um, oh, you can move. Okay. So you can, like, drag the, the room around. I don't remember that being the case. Um, but granted, I didn't do it. Let me, let me take a look. What is this? Oh, my goodness. Mom, I know we don't get along, but I still love you. 
got a harlot of a mom, I must say. She looks... She looks deliberately dressed for certain works, I'll say. A kunai? Um, he must be an anime fan. He must love them ninjas and stuff. I know it. Um, I believe something was in the chest. Let me check here. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, God, the head. What the hell? Just look, just a severed lady's head. Oh, my lord. Okay. I think that's everything. Let, let's... I suppose start the ritual, shall we? Let's let's see what we've got. God, the head. Um, let's take a look here. The scroll with description of the ritual. Okay, let's see. From the distant past, an ancient enemy. People knew. No, that's not it. Uh, here it is. W one of four. To summon a vargoyle, you need three things: a corpse head, notes of the dead, and magic powder, which you will use to retrieve the dead or to revive the dead. First, glue the notes on the chin and the forehead. This is the first step of the right. First, but unimportant. Then unimportant. That's a little odd. Uh, third step, then grab the magic powder. You need to pour the mixture into the dead's eyes. Now that mind is sealed, the dead lips are shut, and the eyes are obscured by a red mist. A dark spirit awakens. It seems like an allegory of some sort. Okay. So, oh, no, go back. Go back one more. So, I suppose... Let me see here. Head of the dead old woman. Maybe Kale is right in these stories about vargoyles are just stupid tales. I need to check. How do I begin the ritual again? Well, I read the school the scroll, so let's let's start this ritual. Let's let's get into this very kind of dark and gruesome activity that I as an eight year old little boy are doing in my bedroom, surrounded by my toys. It's just creepy. Okay, we've got the tags that said chin. Yeah, glue the notes on the chin. Chin of the dead, then glue it on the forehead. And forehead of the deceased, okay. Glued on there. And then pour into the eyes. The, then pour the mixture onto the eyes of the deceased. Oh, okay, bang. Oliver pours the powder onto the dead head's eyes and it quickly absorbs into the skin. And what about the dark spirit that's supposed to immediately awaken? Oh lord. What have we done? Oh, goodness. It's coming alive. And it just becomes this very, very dark thing. And as you can see in the background behind this floating head, uh, everything has gone to hell. I am just like in an alternate version of my room. Everything is the exact opposite. There's blood, there's cracks, there's just everything is asunder and, and torn apart. Um, and we have this demon head floating. It says. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit. I'm a genius. I summoned it. Kale will die of envy when he finds out. Hey, shut it, you evil head. I'm your master now. Oh god, it attacked me. Jesus. Hey, hey, quiet. No, 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 no. This thing wants to eat me. I need to do something quickly. Um... Um, well, I vote magic, um, mainly because I want to see if it does anything. Um, I should try a spell or something. Once my grandmother taught me to defend myself from the dead, I have to just remember the spell. It says. <laughs> uh, stepping quietly, I walk around the body with white chalk. Oh god, that didn't- oh Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm bleeding a whole lot. Uh, throws itself onto Oliver and bites onto his head. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have brain damage. I'm hemorrhaging. Oh, monster, let go, let me go! Struggling, he gets up. Damn, Vorgoyle, you brute. I, I have to, I, I have to come up with something quick as, as soon as possible. Um, um, let's call Kale really quick if we can. I, I don't know what that's gonna do. Is he not gonna attack me while I'm on the phone? Um, let's go to the phone here. Let's, uh, there, Kale, quickly. I have to act quick. The phone keeps ringing. Kale, say something. Answer, damn you. Answer, damn it. Come on, come on. Buddy, is that you? Hey. Kale, I summoned the Vargoyle. What, what, buddy? That That's cool, I guess. I, I just thought of something. Let's put it in Emily's, uh, Emily's bag tomorrow. When, when she opens it, the Vargoyle will fly out and... Kale, you're an idiot. She wants to eat me. What, what should I do? What the hell should I do? What? No, no, that's not good, buddy. Uh, it, it looks like you didn't tame it, and, and it wants to kill you. Look in the scroll, there should be something about taming a Vargoyle. Okay, gotta quickly take a look at the scroll. What do we have here? Let's look at the scroll. 
let's look at the scroll, inspect the thing. Um, oh, here's the bit that's, that's covered up or, or flipped over. Notice this is the corner. Um, okay, let's read it now. Here, it's written, How to Tame a Vargoyle. Righteous enter the- oh shit, I skipped it by accident. The soul's forever unhappy, looking for deliverance from their sorrow. Uh, what now? Aberrants, demons, and sorcerers. God damn it. Look for deliverance from their sorrow. Okay. I have to call Kale again. Maybe he'll know something. Okay, let's get out of this thing. I don't know why the frames are just hitting, like, incredibly low. Lovely. Um... Hmm. You know what, actually? I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on this cliffhanger. Um, and you know what? I might actually come back and, and do a second look at this game. Because I'm fairly intrigued to see where this goes. Um... Actually, mm, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it there, and I'll, I'll just leave it on this kind of cliffhanger, and I think I'm gonna do another video and come back and just go a little bit more into it. So, this has been a Pulse Impressions of um, Leviathan, the last day of the decade, um, and it's a fairly interesting little game, but not game, where you just are carried along this adventure through this very gruesome and dark storyline, and um, I, I must say I, I like it a lot. I, I don't usually go for this kind of stuff, but, but the overall dark tone and just the, the aesthetic with the very well done drawings, uh, it just, it, it's, it's got me hooked, I must say. I, I'm very intrigued to see what is going to happen as the story continues onward. And, uh, as I said, I think I'm going to come back and probably do a part two of this Pulse Impressions because I am very intrigued to see what is around the corner with this demon head. So, uh, yeah, this has been Pulse. Thank you for watching another episode of Pulse Impressions. If I could, I'd like to bug you for a like, a subscribe, a comment down below. Uh, game suggestions, for sure, would be really cool. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching.